Guys, this is Mark Goldberg with a very serious announcement. You people in the UK have done us dirty once again, and we're going to hold a Boston Tea Party-like protest against Rolex. We're going to go to Boston Harbor, and we are going to take all of our Rolexes, and we're going to dump them into the ocean to protest something that has been exported once again from the United Kingdom to the United States of America. But before we get into this Rolex dilemma, this European conundrum, the, uh, the spread of something unsavory from the old world to the new, Let's get the quick fist watch check out of the way, and here it is. Guys, you have no idea how much it means to me if you would please subscribe. Throw me a comment and a like if you've been here all along. Thank you so much, but gosh, I don't want to do this alone. Come do it with me. Today, I am wearing the Rolex Sea Dweller in 43 millimeters of glorious anniversary steel. Loving this watch. Guys, the Watches of Switzerland group is a group of authorized dealers in the United Kingdom. Now, uh, for those of you who are a little geographically challenged, much like myself, which is basically most Americans, let's see if I can get this right. The United Kingdom is composed of England, Ireland, I think Northern Ireland, but not Southern Ireland. Let's call it Let's just call it Ireland. The Ireland part confuses me. Confuses most of us Americans. England, Ireland, Wales, Scotland. I think I'm done, right? That's it? I think that's the, U that's the UK. That's the United Kingdom. To my friends in Great Britain. And what is the difference between Great Britain and the United Kingdom? Anyway, to all of you people on the other side of the pond who are our brethren, hey, you know what? We, we salute you. Uh, and, uh, but I got to say, something has been going on that is nefarious, underhanded, cold-blooded, cunning. And uh, it's, it's something has been going on in your part of the world that appears to be spreading right here. So what has happened? First, it is a well-known fact that Rolex would like its authorized dealers to discourage flipping. Here is the, the definition of flipping as concerns Rolex. This is not a watch collector term, but I'm talking about what, what Rolex is looking for. Um, and this is according to my spy 3.0, who gave me a very thorough debriefing of inside information into Rolex. And uh, so I'll put a link to the, in the description of this video to that so that you can read everything that Spy 3.0 had to say. Matahari, we thank her for her service. However, uh, what we know from her is that the Rolex authorized dealers have been encouraged by Rolex to put a kibosh on flipping. Well, the sort of flipping that Rolex is especially uh, interested in and keen on stopping is any of the hot steel sports models that are purchased and then within three months go onto the gray market, right? So there's a lot of different ways that that can happen, but one of the principal ways is a, uh, a very good customer of the authorized dealer makes the purchase, gets into his car, and on the way home calls a gray marketeer with whom he has a deal and then instantaneously... instantaneously. He is selling his Sea Dweller, or his Batgirl, or his Pepsi GMT, or his Steel Sky Dweller, or a Steel Daytona. There are any number of watches right now, almost everything in steel, that a, uh, that, that a customer can just pick up a phone, and uh, he's paid retail, and he can get retail times... 1.8. I, I don't know what the formula is, but trust me, because you know, because the gray marketeers, they, they got to be able to mark it up and get their pound of flesh also, right? However, um, if you are that customer, you are able to turn a profit instantaneously. And uh, Rolex is really looking to put a stop on things being flipped around that quickly. Oh, and why the authorized dealers care? Because they are worried. They are worried. If they get somehow identified by Rolex as a contributor to the problem, I think that the authorized dealers are worried that Rolex will in fact pull the distribution contract. Now, here in the US, uh, there are, are reportedly approximately 50 authorized dealers who are losing their distribution contract this year alone. And we do have reports out of the UK of certain of the smaller um, authorized distributors also losing their distribution contract. So it is not outside the realm of possibility that Rolex looks at an authorized dealer once they trace back where a lot of these watches are coming from and says, you or you or your customers are abusing this system and we're going to pull the distribution contract from you. So that is, I think, worrying some of the um, 
uh, of the ADs in uh, the United Kingdom. So their response was clever, but um, irritating if you're a collector. And here's their response. Here's how they put a kibosh supposedly on flipping. You buy the watch in the UK and they hold the warranty card for one year. That's right. You get all your, you know, all your accoutrements. They de-sticker the watch, mind you, but you get your, you know, your box, your papers, your book with your hang tag, but they plug out the warranty card and they keep it. And you're, no, you are not getting uh, uh, mon ami. Oh, no, it's not in France. Uh, I say, old chap, uh, yes, we'd be very happy to give you this warranty card, assuming that we don't lose it, but uh, we're going to be holding the damn thing. You know, uh, anyway, that's what's happening. They're holding the warranty card. Now, there have been a couple of cases where the authorized dealer has actually lost the warranty card uh, in the year that they were holding it. But I'm sure in most cases, they're just sticking it in the safe or in a filing cabinet, and then they are mailing it to the customer at the one-year point. Well, first of all, one year is ridiculous. The Rolex seems to be concerning themselves with flips within three months. So if they want to be really conservative, hold it five months. But uh, it just seems crappy to be holding the warranty card at all. Presumably, if you need service during that year, they will give you your card or take the watch in for service. Like, you know, the AD knows exactly when you purchased it and what your warranty situation is. But uh, as we know, everybody who is, who is purchasing watches these days wants to buy Rolex, Steel Sports, box and papers. That's become a huge important thing. And so by holding the papers, they are attempting to slow down the flipping market. Um, well, that's in the UK. And, uh, you know, I made a number of videos saying, ha ha, you, you know, they're, they're not doing that here in America. We got laws. We got consumer protections. They can't do it. Well, dun, 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 dun. Apparently it's happening in the United States. I have got three reports from different parts of the country of uh, people who have purchased Rolex watches, steel sports, and had their warranty cards held for three months, which is not coincidental. I'm sure three months because that seems to be the time period that Rolex is looking to penalize authorized dealers for, uh, you know, flipping during that period of time. And by the way, you know, of course, this stops the consumer, like stops me from buying a Daytona. The AD holds my, you know, warranty card for a few months, stops me from flipping it. But how about those ADs who are selling out the back door to their brother-in-law? You know, I mean, so that doesn't stop that. However, it, uh, it does penalize the consumer in some sense. And well, it's just irritating. Now, mind you, you wanna know what? If an authorized dealer says, look, we'll sell you this Batgirl, uh, but we're gonna hold the warranty card for three months, okay. You know what? I, I personally, I'm not buying with any intention of flipping. So uh, I could live with that. If uh, my authorized dealer uh, can sell me a Daytona, but they've got to hold the warranty card for three months, you know what? Small price to pay. Uh, but uh, on some sense, though, isn't it irritating that you're not getting all the components that you have paid for? I, I, so I, I got questions, and I want you to give me answers and comments about this. Would you make a purchase where the authorized dealer said, we will be holding your card back for a period of three to five months? Or would you say, oh, you know, I'm, you know, would you grab your stack of money, <laughs> you know, like the rancher did, and would you flounce out of the authorized dealer? Or would you say, okay, me, I'm a kind of a realistic person. So I would say, I don't love it. Thank God you're not holding it for a year. Why? Because I'm OCD and I like to have all my bits and pieces together. Like I want the whole, you know, I want the, I want the complete set. I want the full kit, but I don't buy to sell. Uh, I don't buy to flip. So, you know, if, if you want to sell me something that's hard to get and for your own protection, you want to hold back the warranty card for three or four months. Personally, I don't have a big deal about the, I don't have a big problem with that, but how about you guys? I think it's a little irritating and it has come from the United Kingdom all the way to the shores of the United States. So have you heard about this? Um, are you in the UK and you know, have you suffered from this? Does it bother you? Have you made a purchase and uh, had a problem getting your warranty card after the year? Have you just said, I'm not making the purchase because that whole warranty card uh, issue annoys you or do you not care? And if you are in the United States, do you have any personal firsthand knowledge of somebody whose warranty card has been withheld and for how long? I've heard three instances where those were withheld for 90 days and I'd like confirmation. It's Goldberg, peacing out, but before I do that, remember, like, subscribe, give me a comment, throw me a like, 
Thanks for being with me, guys. Paint the sky.